Let's get ready to podcast. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Welcome to the Chris Foss Show podcast. The Chris Foss Show. Com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We certainly appreciate you. Not not you. No, no. You. You over there. Yeah. You. You. We appreciate you tuning into the show and checking it out. Um, the rest of you in the room, we appreciate you as well. So everyone's always welcome here on the Chris Foss Show. Com. Hey, we're coming here with a, another great podcast, as I mentioned before, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the tech news of the day, some interesting things that are happening in the crazy upside down world we're currently living in with the coronavirus. So let's talk about some of the things that are happening in the tech world and uh, some of the things that uh, are going to be making a difference in your life. I got to tell you, I've been using Twitter more than ever, and uh, man, wow, I never should have given up my first love. Uh, Twitter, if you curate it well, if you curate your audience, if you mute people that are noisy, that follow you, if you unfollow people, maybe you've been following for years like I have that uh, have no quality content of any sort, <clears throat> you can really really improve the quality of your Twitter experience. And uh, Twitter's great. I mean, it is freaking awesome. And uh, I feel bad that I left it behind for so many years over Facebook. So uh, top of the news, Twitter is going to be adding labels and warning messages to tweets about COVID-19 with misleading or disputed contents and plans to expand the labels to other topics. This is coming from Reuters and a number of different other outlets that are op operated that. Um <clears throat> Uh, there's a lot of misinformation going around about COVID-19. You probably heard about some of the different scammy documentaries and different things. Uh, you know, the sad part about these sort of uh, pandemics and, and crises is, is it brings all the snake oil salesmen and people who try to get money off it and get rich off it uh, when people are dying and desperate <clears throat> and broke. So, uh, Twitter is going to launch labels and warnings on misleading COVID-19 information. Facebook has removed some of the things. Uh, there was a documentary, I believe it was called Plandemic, that was uh, scrubbed from all the different uh, social media websites. Uh, some of the stuff in it was pretty fucking far-fetched. Do your reading, people. Do your double-checking. Go to Snopes.com. Uh, be careful of, you know, off-brand websites that, you know, you've never heard of, like Joe's fucking opinion uh <laughs> dot com like hey man if that's a not a mainstream media news site you know whatever and if you and please don't buy the hype about mainstream uh media news there's there's certain <laughs> of news organizations do an incredible job they've uncovered all sorts of interesting things they win pulitzer prizes for all their uh work that they do over the years and if it wasn't for um companies that were Label as mainstream media like Washington Post. They never would have broke the story on Nixon um, and a million other things that are out there as well. <clears throat> so don't be a dumbass. Um, so Twitter is going to do these labels and uh, even uh, F uh, Facebook and Google are under pressure to combat misinformation and everything else. Uh, there's a lot of false uh, stuff going around. And this is about life and death. I mean, if you give false information out, people can die. So that's not really cool. Not really cool in most people's books. Um, according to 9 to 5 Mac and sources, uh, Apple's over ear headphones called AirPod Studio will feature neck and head detection sensors, automated audio channel routing and more kind of interesting that they're going with uh, their upcoming uh, over your headphones they had bought the beats brand several years ago and i wonder if they're going to be launched under the beats program or if they're going to be launched under uh, some other name the apple i headphone <laughs> so, <yes. clears throat> According to the New York Times, uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg is blaming COVID-19 for uh, Quibis. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Q-U-I-B-I-S. Quibis paltry downloads is exact lower projections from 7 million users and 250 million uh, subscriber revenue estimated uh, for the first year. Uh, evidently, things have not gone well for the launch of Quibi. One of the problems is it's a stupid fucking name that no one can remember. Like my friends will be like, hey, have you downloaded that uh, new app that has, uh, you know, 10 minute episodes? I'm like, uh, yeah, it starts with a Q or something, doesn't it? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, it's a, it's a, oh yeah, Queeby. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go get that. And then I was like, oh man, where's that app? It's a horrible fucking name, Quibi. I can, I can remember Netflix. Makes sense. The internet and there's flicks on it. Netflix, Queeby. Well, what sort of word association do you have with Queeby? Um, Queeby sounds like, uh, I don't even know what sort of word association you can have with it. It's a horrible fucking name. Um, Q, like Q is not a popular name when it comes to, uh, brand recognition and remembering. So Queeby, it might be the name. It could be the name. It's just, you know, and you just feel like there's less there cause there's like, well, there's only 10 minute episodes and you're like, well, um, I don't know. What if I need more? So you can blame it on, uh, on, on, uh, COVID-19 Jeffrey, but I really think number one, the name sucks and it's not memorable at all. So it's a little harder for your friends and people are locked at home for hours at a time. The format may be wrong every 10 minutes or 10 minute episodes. People are watching for like, uh, I don't know, hundreds of hours or something. So I don't know. I downloaded the app. Actually, I signed up. I went in. I just didn't see anything I liked on there content wise. Um, it, I mean, it looks like there's some cool stuff, but I, I might have started watching something. I mean, there was some crazy thing about um, they're, they're one of the comedians who's really funny. She's a gal comedian, and she's got a episodic, uh, I guess, series about how her boyfriend's sex doll comes alive. <laughs> so I was like, so oh, this could be interesting. <laughs> so I think I, I don't know, I watched like a minute or two of it, and I just went, uh, it's just, I wonder what's on Netflix. Um, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, if you're into Queeby, let me know. Uh, ping me at Twitter at Chris Voss or uh, anywhere on the internet, Chris Voss. Let me know what you think and all that good stuff. Uh, according to Microsoft, they have a new safety uh, family app that's coming out. This is for managing kids' screen time and app usage. It launches in preview on Android and iOS and syncs with Windows and Xbox devices. That could be pretty interesting. This is according to The Verge. Uh, and it's a uh, dedicated app that has family safety. You can manage your kids' screen time, app usage. I wonder if you can cut off their games if they won't get off their gaming. Because <laughs> it does work with Xbox. Oh! Oh, um, <clears throat> evidently you can get reports on their screen time, app usage, set time limits, content controls, turn on location sharing. The app has a uh, pretty sleek design according to The Verge. And uh, you can monitor everything they're doing. So uh, it uh, it, it uh, kind of can give you more control as a parent over what your kids are doing, how much they're doing it. And uh, I suppose you can have control of cutting them off. Ooh, that doesn't sound good at all, huh? Um, I remember years ago I gave my um uh, my niece and nephew's parents um a uh, circle from Disney, and it was so they could cut them off. <laughs> and uh, so my nephew went in and jacked it up somehow, <laughs> broke it on purpose because he got tired of his dad cutting him off the internet. So there you go, watch those kids. Uh, they're pretty smart these days. <laughs> According to the Washington Post, Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo said they are moving a viral 26-minute trailer, which we mentioned earlier, the Plandemic, a conspiracy, uh, conspiracy firm. Wow, man. Can I say anything right today? I should just go back to bed and get up again. Actually, I'm fighting a migraine headache. I think, I've, I think I'm uh, having, uh, I think I'm doing coffee withdrawals. Those are the worst, man. Um, it's a conspiracy firm film that features well-known anti-vaxxers seriously there are people that i've seen on twitter who are yelling and screaming about the um you know the illuminati and the fucking overlords of the government and they say that even if they get a virus uh antidote even if we get <laughs> if we get something you can take a vaccination for the coronavirus they won't take it they're like fucking serious about it. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know what to do with them. Just fucking boggles my mind. So you know, those are being taken down, stripped down. A lot of my people, a lot of my friends shared it 
and they've kind of bought into it. Guys, this is a this is a time when truth matters more than anything. So please be questionable about everything. Everything. Question everything. But especially when it comes from funky sources and weird shit and it's got a bunch of people that are like you know trying to weave together some sort of narrative it's really easy to spot these for me but i guess for other people they get sucked in and they're like i have to believe in some you know that i I realize that reality is hard for some people and they have to go believe a fantasy because fantasy is much easier to deal with or imagine and and kind of ride through than real life you know Sometimes people just can't believe that the horrors of real life are, in fact, the horrors of real life. And they've got to go, I don't know, put some spin twist on it so they can deal with it. I get it, man. But still, be careful what information you consume. Be careful what information you share. According to The Verge, uh, premium email app Newton Mail says it has been bought by new owners and will still charge 50 bucks a year. Holy crap. 50 bucks a year for Gmail or email or I don't know. it's a third unexpected uh, life for the premium email app. Maybe they don't want to charge 50 bucks a year. Wow, man. What is it? Well, like I said, it's that much. Was that like four bucks a month? But I don't know. How good is it? I mean, I really like my Gmail. It's really damn good. Uh, according to protocol, Apple has gone uh, on a cloud computing hiring spree in recent months. Good to know people are getting jobs, bringing as many well-known engineers and a sign that's committed to improving its infrastructure. So more cloud computing. Maybe they're trying to go after uh, Amazon Cloud, some of the other cloud services out there, and uh, be able to provide their own. So the competition space will get crazy. Spotify, according to TechCrunch, is rolling out a new feature called Group Session, which lets multiple premium users control a listening session. So uh, basically it allows two or more of its premium users in the same space to share control over what music gets played. So I guess this is great for parties. Um, If you're all premium users, and I guess you're pumping out music through a centralized speaker you can all take turns fighting over what sort of bullshit you're going to play on the speaker that just sounds like a thing from hell anytime i anytime i uh i learned a long time ago with my stereos and parties and stuff is i like playing my music (laughs) i don't want to hear your music (laughs) Uh, we locked down the speakers and the and everything so you're just going to listen to what the fuck i play that's just the way it is. You can go get your own damn party if you don't like it. <laughs> That's my policy. But, you know, maybe some people like that. They're like, hey, let's have a family thing. It's probably good. You know, maybe if your your whole family's at home, uh, you know, you're all listening to music and you're all having a good time. Maybe that's a thing to do or something. A uh, bunch of chicks sitting around drinking. Uh, have a little party of some type or other, you know, baby shower or things like that. You can Spotify can change over the things. According to TechCrunch, Instagram Lite. The light version of Instagram, <laughs> less calories, <laughs> fewer, <laughs> less calories. <clears throat> the light version of Instagram. Hey, hey, did you see my picture on Instagram? No, it's a little heavy for me. I'm using the Instagram light version. Why? I'm trying to get the calories down. Um, yeah, not consume so much Instagram calories. Uh, it's aimed at emerging markets, has quietly disappeared. According to a source, a new lightweight Instagram app is being developed. There you go. You can use that on your Nokia flip phone. So if you still have one or whatever. According to Engadget, Qualcomm is unveiling their Snapdragon 768G processor with faster graphics performance and global 5G support. So there you go, man. Uh, Yeah. Uh... (laughs) raw performance at Qualcomm. So that'll be nice. Get that in your latest Android phone. According to Coindesk, Bitcoin's third halving, the programmed event where mining rewards drop has occurred, lowering the payout to 6.25 BTC per block. The last halving was in 2016. So uh, there you go. Uh, the network's quadrennial landmark and the most anticipated event of this year in the cryptocurrency industry 
has finally happened. So good for them. Way to go. <laughs> Bitcoin. It's like that that shit's almost crazy than what's going on in the stock market these days. I don't even bother. Uh, I mean, cryptocurrency is going to be great, man, especially with, I don't know, if everything goes to hell with what we're doing here. But who knows, man? I don't know. It seems like the price is always like up 20 billion and down 20 billion. And there's, uh, I just saw the other day, there's a bunch of people made a run on the market, which fucked it all up. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Um, uh, according to uh, VentureBeat, Alexa makes Kendra its cloud based search tool that uses natural language processing to improve enterprise search generally available. So, there you go. If you're looking for cloud-based searches tool that uses natural language to process enterprise search or improve it, you can do that. I'm not sure a lot of people are going to be really into that thing. Um, this is kind of interesting. According to Decrypt, uh, TD Ameritrade-backed Eris X launches the first Ethereum uh, futures trading platform in the U.S. It's authorized by regulators. So there's some safety back there. It's a U.S.-based digital asset trading platform backed by TD Ameritrade. And uh, you can trade Ethereum, if that's your thing. Uh, that's definitely a big thing to actually have um, on there as well. So there you go. Uh, what else do we have uh, up on the news? That was pretty much the rundown of the news. Um this is kind of interesting. Sources say Dave McClure is raising $10 million to buy out some LPs of 500 startups first fund using his practical venture capital firm, which is raising a $100 million fund. That's according to Axis, Axios. So uh, kind, of, um, kind of interesting there. So uh, lots of stuff going on. I hope everyone's staying safe out there in the, uh, in the world. Um, Twitter is going to announce the appointment of Stanford professor and former Google AI chief uh, Fefe. I'm not sure Fefe Lee, I'm Fifi Lee. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, and to its board as an independent director, effective immediately. Um, so you know, interesting things going on in the world and uh, the tech space, if you will. Um, anyway, follow me on Twitter. We're using Twitter a lot at Chris Voss on Twitter. You can go to the CVPN.com, the Chris Voss podcast network and subscribe to nine podcasts that are over there. Holy crap. Nine podcasts. Now lots of great content, authors, CEOs, leaders, all that good stuff. And, um, that's about it for me today. Be safe out there. Wear your mask. Follow the rules, save a life other than your own or your own for that matter. And we'll see you next time.